For the past few weeks and months, we've all experienced a rapid development with AI tools and some of the incredible AI integration into various aspects of content creation. These are fast becoming sorted out baseline features that would be valid for DCC apps in the coming years. In recent times, we've explored some of these tools and what we've all toiled with are a glimpse of what the future holds. And today we're looking at a free add-on that can change how you get to render your next 3D model or your next 3D scene in Blender. This is an AI add-on that actually allows you to take advantage of an AI diffusion model and get your rendering happening in different variant styles and also however you want them. This add-on takes a look at your basic 3D model, a simple description, and you can start creating magnificent photos and artworks with it. And for those who like to get this, you can simply download this either on Gumroad, GitHub or on Blender Market Total for free. Once you download the add-on, you can simply fire up Blender. I would suggest you use Blender 3.3 in this case and the next thing you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference and then you can go over to the add-on section, click on install and install the zip file of the add-on that you just downloaded. And once you add that, you can click on the check button, click on this drop down and of course, this would require you to sign up for Dream Studio. Dream Studio is free, which simply means that you can create a brand new account and also have a couple of tokens which you can use. But if you've exhausted your trial period, you may need to pay. So within your account section, there is an API key that you need to copy. Copy the API key, come back here to Blender and simply paste that. And once you paste it, that is all you need to do. Click on the bugger menu, save this, then you can go over to this section where you get to find your renderer, scroll all the way down and you notice that you have the enable AI render. If you click on this button, you can define the size of what you want. Right here, you can click and change the size, but we're just going to set this as 512 by 512 for the purpose of this video, as this would be our render image size and you notice that our camera automatically switches to that. Now, the next thing which we need to do is to go into the camera view by tapping zero on the keyboard and we can now start creating what we want. For this example, we're just going to create a bowl, a couple of spheres, which will represent the marbles that will exist within the bowl. And once we have this ready, we'll proceed to add individual materials to these elements, as this is what the AI render would look at to differentiate one model from another. And once we have this ready, we need to put in a prompt. The prompt which we're going to put in here is a bowl filled with marble on a table. We can now proceed to hit the render button and render this. But then before we hit the render button, you'd also notice that we have a brand new tab called the AI renderer. So this is a composition tab where everything exists once you hit the render button. So once you render the image that you have, what happens is the AI renderer takes a look at the image that you have, which is the rendered image, goes online and creates a stylized version of this image based off the style that you've selected. And the deciding factor is the model that you have and the prompts that you've imputed in. So with this, you can create variations of the very same thing as all you require to create any stylistic look of any model that you're going for is a simple base model that has a material set to it, which the AI tool uses as some form of segmentation to create the art piece for you. With this here, we can of course go over to where we have operations, go all the way down and even create a new image from the last AI image. So what actually happens is this looks at the AI image and creates a brand new image based off this one. So if we click on that button, give it some time, you would notice that it generates something and we can of course go ahead and click one more time to generate another one. So at this point you can start creating a very similar styled looking image, but variations based off an AI generated image. And if you're interested in creating another kind of image based off a render that you've just made, then you can click on the new image from last render. It takes a look at the last render and creates a brand new image based off that. So at this point, you can simply select a style that you want and then click on the render button and get a brand new style. And you can use this for literally anything. We do have a couple of cones and all we did is just sculpt a little bit of the grid and then we would like to generate dunes with pyramids. And automatically we can get variations of what we want. And this is just happening with a click of a button. And you can generate very interesting results based off what you have in your scene. And if you have access to add-ons like Sketchfab, where you can download free 3D models. Of course, you can proceed to use this and populate your scene, create a couple of things, and then start creating some interesting looking renders. Something that stands out in this case is unlike Dream Texture, where you have to download the entire stable diffusion on your PC, or simply use the plugin and download this from the back end. 
This doesn't require you to download any of that sort. You just need to have the add-on installed, just like we explained in the beginning of the video. And then you can start generating things based off the 3D models that you have on your viewport. With a render like this, there's also some more options that you can have access to. If we go over to the advanced options, we can scroll all the way down and you would notice that we have image similarities, some steps that can be taken to produce the image that we have, the prompt strength, and also a drop down that contains samplers that we can work with. So at this point, if you'd like to get more image similarities, you can crank this all the way up to 0.50. And if you're also thinking about increasing the prompt strength, you can of course go ahead and do that. So once we do this, we can click on the new image from last AI image, which is something we explained earlier. And this would go through to generate a new image based off the last AI image that we have. Of course, you can go back to your layout, make a couple of adjustments in terms of textures, add a couple of things around and you can render and get some more and nicer looking results. So depending on what you want to create, you now have the ability of using a simple model as a placeholder in Blender and dictates to the AI tool what you like to create. And with a tool like this, you can proceed to start making some very tiny looking designs. So in this case, we're just going to use a cube and just create a couple of things. And what we'll like this to generate is a hyperloop running through a city. Of course, the results that you're going to be getting are varying based on the start that you select, but it just begins to open up a whole lot of possibilities. So instead of thinking about a concept design for your final loop, you can just use some of those basic meshes as building blocks and start creating some very imaginative art that you can finally use to make your final models and get some things going. Although there are certain things that I wish to see in an updated version of this, which I can't currently confirm if they do work. And it is this simple. If you do render an animation with this tool being active, it doesn't render AI animations for you. You still end up with the default animation that you're rendering via EV or cycles. And this is something I would like to see in future iterations of this tool. Something else which I also love to see is because this works with the composition section of Blender, I would love to see a wonderful way of how this would take all of the render images and output those as AI files automatically. And if you're thinking about using this to replace dream textures in terms of creating seamless textures, then you may want to discount that as Dream Textures is super cool at creating seamless textures, but this doesn't really do a good job at that as it is focused on using 3D models to create interesting visuals for you. So. This is more like it. For those who would like to take a look at this, either on Blender Market, Gumroad, or on GitHub, links to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this ones in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.